So we're still working towards our goal of formula calculations, being able to calculate the formula of a molecule. In our last lesson, we learned how to do percent composition, and that's the first step in getting to the formula calculation. Our next step is to be able to calculate an empirical formula. What is an empirical formula? It is the smallest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. Okay, the smallest whole number ratio, meaning you have reduced the subscripts as far as they can go and still keeping that ratio intact. For example, if you have C2H6, both 2 and 6 can be reduced because they have numbers in common. You can divide both of them by 2 to reduce their subscripts to CH3. Okay, so 2 divided by 2 is 1, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Okay, so uh, you can equate this to finding the lowest common denominator in math class. Okay, so that's what you're doing here. You're seeing if you can reduce them. So if this was uh, C3H9, you could still reduce it down in the same way. Okay, so that's your empirical formula, the smallest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. So you've reduced the subscripts as far as they can go. So how do you find an empirical formula? First, you find the mass or the percent of each element in the compound. So that's why we had to learn how to do percent composition first. Then you use that to find the moles of each element. Then we are going to divide moles by the smallest one to find your subscripts. Okay, and I'm going to work through a problem for you, show you an example. When necessary, we'll multiply our subscripts by 2, 3, or 4 to get whole numbers. So sometimes in step 3, you won't get all whole numbers. You may get uh, like 2.5. If that's the case, you can't have half of an atom. So we multiply until we get to a whole number. Let's look at an example. Okay, so find the empirical formula for a sample that is 25.9% nitrogen and 74.1% oxygen. Okay, so you've been given percentages here and that we can pop that into our um, equation like so. So we can turn those right into grams. Okay, because if we had a sample that was 25.9 grams of nitrogen and 74.1 grams of oxygen, then that percentage would still be the same. It would be 25.9% of nitrogen if we use that as a sample. So we can replace the percent sign with a gram. Okay, it's a direct conversion that we can do. Okay, now we are going to use our molar mass to convert, convert this to moles. So you can see how we're using the skills that we've been learning over the last several lessons. We're bringing them all together in this one. Okay, so molar mass, where did I, where did I get that number? I got that off of my periodic table. So if you look at nitrogen on the periodic table, you'll see it's 14.01. And remember that mass is grams per mole off the periodic table. Okay, so that's how we're going to convert this to moles. So now that I have grams on top and grams on the bottom, those are going to cancel off, and I'm just left with moles. Okay, so 25.9 divided by 14.01 is going to equal 1.85 moles of nitrogen. Okay, and I'm definitely going to write nitrogen there so that as I continue to do this problem, I'm getting ready to have to do this for oxygen too, and I want to make sure I don't forget which one's which. Okay. So in the next one, let's do oxygen. So put in 74.1 grams. Go to my periodic table to find my molar mass, which is 16.00 grams per mole. My grams cancel off, and I'm left with moles of oxygen. So 74.1 divided by 16, and I get 4.63 moles of oxygen. Okay, now that's step one and step two. Next is step three. We take the smallest mole and divide by it. Okay, so if I compare these two numbers, I have 1.85 and 4.63. 1.85 is smaller. 
it's the smallest out of these two. So I'm going to divide both of them by that number. Okay, I divide by the smallest. Okay, so I'm going to do 1.85 divided by 1.85, and I'm going to get 1. And notice my moles cancel off, and I get 1 nitrogen. Okay, same thing down here. We're going to do 4.63 divided by 1.85. My moles cancel off, and I am left with 2.5 oxygen. Okay, and this is one of those examples where you don't get a whole number. So if I took this at face value just like this, that means my empirical formula would be N1O2.5. But we can't have half of an oxygen. Okay, we can't have half of an atom. So now, how do we make 2.5 a whole number? You multiply by 2. So 1 times 2 is 2, so that becomes N2. 2.5 times 2 becomes 5, so you have N2O5, and this is your empirical formula. Notice that these cannot be reduced. 2 and 5 do not have a number that they can be divided by and get another whole number. Okay, so this is the lowest that it can go down, and we have just calculated empirical formula. If you don't understand what we just went over, get into contact with me so I can help you out.